Of all the videos that you guys love from my channel are all related to QuickBooks tutorials. So I thought I'd continue to create a few more videos related to QuickBooks tutorials to teach you exactly how to use QuickBooks online. Hello, my name is Adrena. I am the owner and accountant here at Accounting by Adrena. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to adjust entries in QuickBooks. Now this is gonna be super quick, super easy tutorial. By the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly how to navigate into QuickBooks online, no matter what version you're using, minus the self-employed version, because the self-employed version is gonna be a little bit different from the other versions that we're talking about, Simple Start, Essentials, and Advanced. So stay tuned because I'm gonna show you exactly how to adjust entries in QuickBooks online. All right, friends, now I just wanted to make sure that you know exactly how to get to the test drive version in case you ever wanted to practice a few things yourself outside of your own QuickBooks software. So you can go ahead and Google search QuickBooks test drive and make sure you click on the link that is an intuit.com link. And we're going to go ahead and open that up. It's going to ask you for a security verification. And yeah, we are not robots. <laughs> We're actual human beings here. Um, all right, so it's gonna take us to the home page, and what I wanted to show you just a few different ways on how you can adjust entries in QuickBooks. Now I'm only referring to an open period. So if your QuickBooks accountant has already closed a certain period, you cannot go back in time to correct an entry. What you would want to do is make the corrections moving forward with your accountant. So make sure that you are only adjusting entries in an open period. Okay, so the first one that I wanted to go to was in the bank feed. Now I've showed you the bank feed before in other videos. And in the previous video, I've also showed you exactly how to connect your bank account to QuickBooks. So you can see that video with the link below. I'll go ahead and, and put the link there just in case that you have any questions on that. So. Let's just say that you're going through your bookkeeping day by day and, you know, let's take this one, for example, Books by Bessie. Let's say you purchased something for the office. So that is an office expense. But what if you put it as advertising by accident and you went ahead and clicked add? How do you get that back? That is going to be the question, right? So in this bank feed, in order to adjust that entry, there's a couple ways that you can adjust that entry. You can actually select this button here that says categorized. And very simply, you can click this button that says undo. I know it's really just that easy. So you can go back to the bank feed and find that same entry and say, oh, okay, office expenses and go ahead and add that to your books. Now another way that you can adjust that particular entry is by going to the vendor file. So we're going to go to vendors and we're going to search the books by Bessie. It's right there so we don't need to search it. Um, and I always like to expand the vendor, the vendor section here by clicking this little button here that kind of collapses it. And then I um, close out that sidebar. So I'm only looking at what I need to look at. Okay, so now what you can see here is there are three transactions for books by Bessie. Now it looks like one of them was a check. So there's that. And then another one was an invoice. That's what this one is here, Bill. And then the, this one here is the payment on that invoice. So that's obviously going to clear that out, but if it's a check without an invoice, it's going to show as kind of like oh, just one transaction. This is called a double entry here. So on the entry that is hitting your GL, that's hitting your general ledger in this category here. Okay, so it's saying books by Bessie was an accounting fee. Well, that's not an accounting, maybe it is an accounting fee, but it's, um, in our example, it's not an accounting fee here, but so we're gonna change that to office expenses here. So it's gonna allow you to do that in an open period, and it's gonna be that simple. And all you have to do is click on save and close. So it says this transaction is edit that you are editing is linked to others. Are you sure you wanna modify it? So the other transaction, remember how I mentioned it's a double entry? It's linked to the other transaction and we're going to go ahead and click on yes and then it'll save it and we'll move on with our lives, right? However, 
if you needed to update that transaction in a closed period, you need to get with your accountant user in order to do that. All right, moving forward. Usually we are going to be uh, entering new items here in this new button. Um, so let's say we're gonna enter a check. Okay, so I just wrote a check and let's just go ahead and pick um, a random person. Okay, Cigna Healthcare. So I just wrote a check for healthcare and it came out of the checking account. It's on today's date. There's the check number. And let's say that I had ended up putting this to workers' compensation. And let's say the amount is $500, save and close. And, oh no, the screen closed. Where do I go back to get that information? So you can go back to the vendor file at, as I had showed you previously with the first example. However, I wanna show you a different way here. So we can click on new and check again, and you see this little button here? It's actually gonna show the most recent checks that you have written and entered in QuickBooks. So we can pull it up this way. And we can say, oh, whoops, this is not workers' compensation. It's actually just insurance. So you can click on that there and then save and close that way. And that is another easy way to adjust an entry in an open period. Now, let's say you wanted to take a look at a check that you wrote that wasn't recent and it's not showing up on this list here. You can actually scroll down and click on this little button here. It's kind of like a an Easter egg, right? I mean, it's really hidden. So go ahead and click on view more there. And then this search feature is actually very robust. It's very neat. I like using it, especially for checks. Maybe you didn't even know what the vendor name is, but you know the check number. So you can actually search by that. So there's the check right there. If you just double click on that, you'll open up the check. But I wanted to show you if you do click on this, I believe it takes you back to the vendor file. So. Just make sure that you're careful in that search feature where you're clicking. That search feature is actually gonna be very similar to how it looks for a bank deposit and a transfer as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that. Okay, so on the screen it shows that there are two payments that are gonna be coming in on January 12th. So they're just waiting for an item to match with. But if we wanted to look at prior deposits that were already entered into QuickBooks, you can go ahead and click on that recent deposit button there. And if, it was, if it's not showing up on the list, go ahead and click on view more and then you'll see all of the, the deposits here listed. So there's just a few different ways that I showed you. We looked at expenses, we looked at deposits. We also looked at how to adjust entries in the bank feed. So I hope that is helpful. That's all I have for you today. And I will see you guys in the next video. All right, friends, I told you it's that simple to adjust entries in QuickBooks Online. Now, as usual, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments section below and make sure to like and subscribe to my channel so you are the first to know of upcoming YouTube QuickBooks videos. I'm so excited to continue to share QuickBooks tutorials on YouTube. Don't forget to share this with your friends and family, those entrepreneur friends especially, because I know that they are wondering exactly this same thing. And also, if you guys have any suggestions on future videos as far as QuickBooks tutorials are concerned, go ahead and drop those in the comments section below and I will make sure to get to that as soon as I can. All right, friends, I will see you in the next video.